Agriculture is reaping the benefits of new technology and there is a growing recognition among governments and donor agencies that agriculture must be the mainstay of any development agenda. But what technological innovations are being worked on right now that will put us on a path to produce more from less? The challenges really are how do we make food affordable for everyone because that really is at the heart of uh, solving the food security problem, particularly in the developing world. If estimates are correct, relying on traditional organic farming may not be an option to feed the billions of extra mouths in our future. So what goes on behind the scenes at agrochemical companies such as Bayer Crop Science, Monsanto and Syngenta? It's a very research intensive industry. Uh, it costs more than $250 million to bring the new crop protection active ingredient to the market. And a lot of this is due to the safety testing. And of course, there's the hot topic of genetic modification. Will that become prevalent? Because there's so much genetic modification going on, and because the science hasn't shown major problems with it, although we may be anxious about it, it may become something that creeps up over time and becomes more commonplace. We've got something that can, that can have much higher yield, which can go a long way towards helping those in major developed countries or in less developed countries to help those people get enough food to eat. From the experimental stage to the scaling up of the products to sell on the open market is big business. But it isn't just in the lab that things need to change. The UN says farmers are likely to adopt technologies only if there are sound incentives to do so, such as well-functioning input and output markets, improved infrastructure, and better finance or risk management tools. But it isn't just about increasing crop yields or guaranteeing grains. No, here scientists are also working on fruits and vegetables that they want you to buy. Charlie's Baxter's work looks at vegetable trades and technology. Vegetables is a very complex business. We need to provide yield and protection for the grower through pest and disease resistances. We need to provide uniformity and um, appearance for the chain and the retailer. And we need to provide flavor for the consumer to our, um, in the seeds that we deliver to our vegetable growers. Much more intensification in the vegetable business, much more um, potential to invest in technology because you have a very high value product at the end of the day. Okay, let's take a look at some of the produce that you're developing in here in one of these glass houses. So uh, tell me what it is and how it's different from, from other vegetables. So here at Syngenta we've developed a, um, a seedless snack pepper. So this has been developed by our global breeding team in pepper. And um, it's aimed at the uh, snacking market, which is a new area for um, innovative consumers who um, want a product that's a bit different. They want to eat food on the go. Um, they want convenience. So it's great tasting. And also, it doesn't contain any seeds at all. So you can just eat it in one or two bites. What about the tomato? With tomato, we've done a lot of work with flavor scientists. So we're looking at the um, fundamentals of flavor and what provides flavor in a tomato fruit. We know that sugar is important, but actually we see that volatile metabolites are very important as well. And these are the um, metabolites which are released in your mouth when you chew the fruit and give great fruity flavor. So greater yields, crop protection, a uniform look and a great taste are the goals of agriculture scientists. But it isn't just the future fruit, vegetables and grains that technology could help.